buddy. How are you doing? How are you? <laughs> doing. Huh? Thank you guys for coming tonight. We're going to have a funny show. Go fuck right. yourself. Um, first up will be Derek Iyer. Let's have a, give a round of applause for Derek. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm glad you all can hear me. And uh, I hope you all had a good Thanksgiving. I had a great Thanksgiving. I didn't have to cook or clean or anything. I was just a guest. The host was fantastic. She got a new boyfriend. His name was uh, Jerry. Now, Jerry and I got to sit. We got to sit next to each other. We had a great time. We got to the joke. Have a great night. And then, just like any good Thanksgiving conversation, it eventually came to, uh, to politics. The best part of any good Christmas dinner. And uh, I found something. I discovered that Jerry and I have slightly different political views. Like, I'm a little liberal. He's a little conservative. I'm pro-choice. Like, I think, you know, women should have all those rights. I don't think any guy should be saying that. But he, you know, he thinks 9-11 was an inside job. Just those little differences, you know. <laughs> just the little things. But um, on the way over here, or I'm sorry, on the way over here, but this morning, I was dropping my mom off at the airport, and she asked me, you know, Derek, I'm a little worried about you. Um, are there any scary parts of Salt Lake? And I was like, I've never been asked that before. And I was like, there's scarier parts, I guess. But I'm never worried because if I ever am in like a tough situation, I know all I have to do is just hold the hand of another man and suddenly two church police will appear out of nowhere. <laughs> all right, cut that out. None of that here in Salt Lake City. But, um, <laughs> geez, that's so, um, so anyway, actually I was on the bad part of Salt Lake the other day. I was in the West part and I was walking to a concert. And there is this uh, lady and this guy across the street from me. Now the lady, she has on this oversized black hoodie, these like muddy, raggy jeans, and just this ugly, this horrendous like pink and white sh zebra striped shirt. She has an outfit like just from her whole life story. Like, it's, like, it's like, oh, you gave up. I get it. It's okay. <laughs> She's chasing this guy though. Uh, I shouldn't say chasing. She is pursuing this individual, and she has a kid in one hand and a 40 ounce in the other. <laughs> and she's going, "You walking away from the greatest thing, and you'll laugh." And I was, like, "Whoa!" And I'm, but realistically, I was like, "No, he's not." <laughs> if anything, this is going to be like the, the point when his level of life turns around. Like tomorrow, he's going to get a promotion. Next day, he's going to go to the rub and tug. He's going to get a lottery. It's going to be great. It's going to be a great time. And I have to apologize about that horrendous accent I just tried. I can't do accents, at least by choice. For some reason, though, I always throw on a southern accent whenever someone speaks to me in that like high class, out like Alabama accent. Like I will suddenly throw on that zippity doo dah language. I don't mean to, but whenever I'm walking on the street, like I'll walk in front of like I'm like a vape store. And speaking of vape stores, have you all noticed how many vape stores there are nowadays? Like whenever I see one, I'm like, oh. In six months, that's going to be a great used clothing store. I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> but anyway, like, I'll be in front of a like, vape store or something, and then uh, a guy will approach me and he'll go, Excuse me, sir, can I ask you a teensy weensy little favor? And I will go, Of course, honey, every dog has fleas. <laughs> I know one day I'm going to get just like a nice little, I'm going to get like a certification, like, you know, certified southerner. I've never even been to the South, but I've only been to like North Carolina maybe once. I don't know. Just whatever. <laughs> But, uh, let me get a quick drink here, one second. So I'm not from here, I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I noticed something when I first came out here, and that's that people here get married way too young. Uh, I'm 21, and there are people who are younger than me that are already married and have children. I don't understand that, that is way too much responsibility, and the whole idea of having children when you're younger than 21, I can tell you right now that is not the guy's decision. Because I can tell you why. Ladies, we... I can tell you why. It's because we, as guys, are children, and we don't want any damn competition. <laughs> we want all of your attention and none of the responsibility. And here's the thing, that's a lot of responsibility, having a kid. I have none of that. Like, I'll tell you, I, I'll give you an example. So over the summer, uh, I, I worked and I had an apartment and I had this plant. And the thing about my apartment is I got sun from like 5 in the morning till 9 at night. Like all sun. But I was like, with my plant, by the way, this is a plastic plant. Her name's Lucille. She's great. I love her. But I have this plastic plant. I put it on the window sill. There's a blackout curtain. I'm getting so much sun. So she's getting sun from two different directions at all points of the day, basically. And a couple days I'm not looking after her. And I woke up and she's melted. I can't even keep plastic alive. <laughs> let alone a child. <laughs> Like, I've only done maybe two adult things in my entire life. One, I get way too excited when I buy small kitchen appliances. <laughs> like, I will buy a toaster, I think it's going to change my whole life. Like, I'll buy a toaster, I'll just be like, oh my god, 
I can like make bread into slightly more crunchy bread, bagels, it's gonna be great. For me, like whenever I buy like a breakfast maker, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get a promotion now, I'm gonna go to the rub and tug, I'm gonna just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna, uh, <laughs> sorry. But it's like, one, so I've done two adult things in my life. I've done that, and then I, I watch a lot of Game of Thrones while drinking beer and not having pants on. That's like the only other adult thing I've done. <laughs> Now, like, and here's the thing, I love Game of Thrones. If you had told me, if you had told, like, 11-year-old me, you go back in time to 11-year-old me, there would be a TV show that everyone watches that is 95% dragons and boobs. I would, like, 11-year-old me would have a lot of questions. First of all, why are you, like, why are you talking to me? Why are you from the future? Is Donald Trump really president? <laughs> but um, mostly, though, he'd be really excited and really confused because I remember 11-year-old me, nothing was, like, we were, we were definitely curious when we were all 11. Like, I remember one pivotal moment of my life where I decided, okay, I'm 11, I have urges, and I'm going to ask Google the big questions. So I go on Google, I'm at the computer, I'm like, looking, I'm like, okay, looking around, no one's near me, I'm like, okay. Girl. Okay. Images. Okay, I'm 11, so I'm naturally attracted to women my own age, so I type in, 11 year old girl. Again. I'm 11, give me a break. I type in 11 year old girl, no shirt on. <laughs> now the issue wasn't that I typed in 11 year old girl, no shirt on. The issue is that I typed in 11 year old girl, no shirt on in a public middle school library. <laughs> I got a call. And uh, so going back to TV, back to Game of Thrones for a second, the one thing I miss whenever I watch Game of Thrones is that there's no more commercials. Like, I don't get to see commercials anymore for everything online. And I used to love commercials when I was younger, and I still do now, but you have to watch them in a certain way. Like, the way I watch commercials is that I only watch the first 10 seconds, and I act like that's the whole commercial. So, for example, let's say like a Lunesta commercial. Every Lunesta commercial is the exact same. You got a girl, she's in bed, she can't sleep, she's got like bloodshot eyes, she's tossing and turning. There's a the butterfly. Butterfly is like the Lunesta mascot. So you got the butterfly, girl, butterfly, girl, butterfly, girl. That's the whole thing. So if you watch the whole commercial, it'll be uh, she tosses it and turns, and this butterfly will swoop in and magically, like you know, land on her cheek, and just suddenly all of her worry in the world will just flutter out of her, and she'll close her eyes and fall asleep, and I'll go to Lunesta for a better night's sleep, and I'll go over the side effects. Now, great commercial. Every commercial for them is the exact same. I watch the commercials though, where it's uh, you watch the first ten seconds, you'll just see a butterfly swoop in and silently murder a woman in her sleep. <laughs> It's great. See, watching commercials like that for the first 10 seconds, you get like that same kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> that's an attention span as like a four-year-old or a stoner, which typically is like 95% of your audience anyway, you know? <laughs> so you're probably fine. But anyway, I was actually researching into Lunesta, and Lunesta has some really weird side effects. Uh, I did some research on them. Let me just pull them out here. So Lunesta, if you guys didn't know, is a sleep aid. And uh, what I noticed was, I read this online, some people who take Lunesta exhibited unusual behaviors during sleep, such as getting out of bed and driving a car, preparing and eating food, having sex, or making phone calls. Now, is this all like in one night? Because that is more action than my entire freshman year of college. Right there. Like, or is this all at the same time? Because that is some Olympic level coordination right there. Let's make it a sport, I'll watch it, you'll all watch it, it'll be great. And some other, uh, I, like another thing I was some of the side effects are crazy. And the thing I love about side effects is that uh, they'll test a drug for like, it's got to be FDA approved. So they'll test a drug for like 10, 15 years, they'll go, okay, here's our drug, here's what it does. And after 10 to 15 years of research, here's all the ways it will still fuck you up. It's great. So I was looking at some of the side effects for Lunesta, and first I saw was a discoloration. So I want to let you know, when I first started Lunesta, I was actually a black man. <laughs> And uh, I also noticed uh, constipation, diarrhea. Now, is that a choice? Because that's a rough choice right there. <laughs> Just saying. Um, uncontrolled seizures. I'm going to say that again for y'all. Uncontrolled seizures. As compared to the seizures you can control, which, just as a frame of reference, is just white people dancing. Just like that. And uh, feeling as if you are outside your body. God damn, Lunesta, you are some shit. Like, oh my god. Um, let's see, a uh, breast enlargement in men. I think I'm okay. All right. Uh, and then finally, premature ejaculation. So I had sex on a Monday, <laughs> any minute now. <laughs> okay, thanks everybody, y'all been great. Uh, next up is Arlon Ogunov. Arlon Ogunov.